Yes, of course. Burl Bearer. <laughs> I've known a few writers who were rogues and vagabonds. And I'm Roger Moore. I didn't supply the microphone. Ah, yes. The following program is produced with a vengeance by Magic Matt Allen on the Outlaw Radio Network. Ladies and gentlemen, live from the soapily beautific hills of Encino, where industry and nature work hand in hand to create a better life for all of us, is true crime uncensored. I am the legendary Burl Bear, the man in the lawyer chair, Don Waldman. Who are you going to believe, me or your eyes? Well, I don't think I'll believe Not your eyes. <laughs> Over in the corner, we have the eternally youthful, handsome and charming Shadow Stevens. Oh, gee, stop. Please, please. <laughs> I don't Hold just, back. Just hold back. I'm trying to scam uh, you, Shadow. No more. I want you to buy into this. And I guess Michael Friedlander, who knows all about detecting the scam because, well, he's not a scammer himself unless he's scamming us into believing that he's an expert on scams. We will soon find out. We have a lawyer here and a showbiz personality, pal, so if you're trying to scam us, <laughs> you're up against some tough competition. You know, it's like the cowardly lion. I want to believe. I want to believe. <laughs> yeah. That's what's behind all these damn scam. Exactly. People just want to believe. Now, I, he has a book which I'll we'll hold up to the golden microphone so they can all see. Can't recommend this book enough. Just great reading. Detecting the Scam, Nelson Mandela's Gift, Introducing Ten Powers of Negotiation and <laughs> The Duck School <laughs> by Michael Friedlander, who knows about ducks and schools and scams and Nelson Mandela because he lived in South Africa. When did you decide that you wanted to put together this incredible guy. I mean, when I tell people the title of this book, they go, huh? <laughs> T- tell us how this coalesced in your consciousness, sir. Well, it, it was a long, dark night. Mm. <laughs> That's the way it always starts. <laughs> no, you know, I was, I've always been intrigued by scams, and when I looked at these high-profile scams, it just looked as if something was wrong. There were just too many smart people around. Well, the thing about scams is you can't get away from them. I pick up the morning paper and Two Vitesse ex-leaders indicted. The devastation of this isn't only financial. Bernie Madoff's son committed suicide. Yeah, that, yeah. yeah. yeah that was uh, today. And then the, the scam I did not was not aware of. At least the name of the guy is the whole weapons of mass destruction oh, scam. You had to remember that guy. Well, I, the, the the guy who so politely provided us with all this erroneous information <laughs> resulted in so many people I always felt that he was a primary reason that we got into this weapons of mass discru- destruction destruction <laughs> fiasco. So tell me, sir, getting back to you being our honored guest, there you were <laughs> minding your own business, seeing these scams come down, and in your mind you said to yourself. Well, I said to myself, how is it possible that you could have so many smart people getting paid so much money to advise those closest to the scammers and see all this stuff going on and not say or do anything? And it just struck me that when these guys were faced between the choice of integrity or money, they chose the money. They chose the money. Absolutely right. It's it's always about greed. What did Madoff say? 12% per year guaranteed just about 14 years? That's ridiculous. No ups and downs in the market. Oh, I don't tell anybody. <laughs> well, you, you have a thing in your book which you call the subway test. That's right, yeah. Will you explain that to our loyal listeners worldwide? <laughs> yeah, sure. This is what happens. You're walking in a subway and somebody approaches you and says, uh, here's a Rolex. Would you like to buy a Rolex? And it looks like a Rolex when you pick it up, but it doesn't feel like one. And the guy looks at you and he says he wants 50 bucks. And you decide, <laughs> what the hell, I'll, I'll, I'll buy it. Question, have you been scammed? And the answer is hell no. You just bought a fake Rolex knowing it to be a fake Rolex. Of course. The more interesting question, though, becomes that a friend of yours is entertaining a prospective investor for his business. And he asks if he can borrow your fake Rolex. And you say, sure. And it then turns out that you know the investor, so you're invited for dinner too. And at dinner, your friend taps his Rolex, and he says, wow, what a great watch. And Michael and I bought it together just the other day. It cost 30 grand. <laughs> <laughs> My question is, approximately when does your silence result in you joining the scammer class? And my answer is approximately immediately. Yes. Of course. (laughs) Okay. And what happened with the scams, I believe, is that there were a lot of people out there who knew what was going on, but who chose not to say anything. 
And by doing so, they became part of the scammer class. Yeah. And, and that includes our finest attorneys, our finest accountants, our finest analysts, because they were making too much money and they didn't want to give up that money. Well, didn't they figure that sooner or later the, the bubble, the you know, the offshore bubble is going to burst somewhere along the line? It's going to catch up? Well, you know, I think all these guys are smart. and uh, The smartest know. guys in the room. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I think they're, they're all really smart. And what, what lands up um, happening is that when the scam finally does implode, um, they've covered themselves and they run for the hills. You know, and uh, they, they argue that... Uh, you know, they weren't scamming. They were just giving legitimate advice, which wasn't taken, maybe. <laughs> or it, was, it wasn't that good advice to begin with. But there are clues all along the way. You look at the Enron scandal, and uh, you look at the, what they say they're doing for a living, <laughs> or, or how they're advising their customer, or where the money's coming from, or what the interest rates are. And you're going, this doesn't seem right. It doesn't make sense. This isn't possible. And yet it just kept rolling. That's exactly right. I mean, the, the, the weirdest thing about the Enron scam was the quality of the Enron board. Oh, I mean, these guys were all superstars. And a large part of the Enron scam was that what these guys would do because of the mark-to-marketing accounting system that they had is that they would book revenues the moment the contracts were signed, not when the revenues came in. Mm -hmm. So what would happen is they'd have a 20-year energy deal and they would book what they perceived to be the value of a 20-year energy deal at the time, which is good and bad news. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, the, the good news is they're doing great. The bad news is the next quarter they've got to do the same contract but better in order to, in order to keep... Uh, but the money's not really there. Well, no, I mean, no, one of the right. directors at Enron is the former dean of business administration for the graduate school at Stanford University <laughs> right. and an accounting professor, <laughs> and he can't figure out the difference between uh, cash being taken out of a company. What was he taking out? $77 million a month and paying it back with stock options That's in right. Enron? <laughs> well, I was just reading... You know, that isn't going to last very long. No. When they, they finally came down and were doing the audit on these guys, uh, they, they sent this guy uh, Muckleroy. That's right. Now, now he is, is, doesn't put up with any crap. <laughs> he, 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 uh, he takes a look. He's, they they got to cover a billion dollars. And he meets with uh, Mastroni, I guess is the guy's name, to review their books. And he, he demands to see the real books. And he says, you know. These are the real books. You know, he says, I've <laughs> killed people. And I sleep like a baby. And the next day, the guy brought the books. <laughs> Sometimes you have to put a little thumb pressure on the you know, scales of justice here. Uh, I've I got to tell you that I'm very impressed that you guys have read the book because the last guy that, that interviewed me for the book hadn't read it. <laughs> well, that seems to be the consensus of most of the people we've interviewed over the years. Yes, that's true. Well, well you've seen my boys out on the shelf. Yeah, that the big out. mistake a lot of these authors make is they send a list of questions, yeah, and nobody does them. that with us. <laughs> we don't want to know anything. Right? We're going to take a short 60-second break. We'll be right back detecting the scam. Thank you. 